in loving memory of Jonathan McKenzie, gone but never forgotten. The night jumps from one square to another in an L shape. Baby, you got it. He crosses two squares in a straight line, and then one square, either left or right. Either left or right. Either left or right. Either left or right. One king, one queen, two bishops, two rooks, two knights, two players, eight pawns, one board. Hi, and thanks for tuning back into the Pawn Moves First. I know we've been away for a while, but I did need the break even though we only record once a month i have a youtube program i feel about every day i walk i talk so i i kind of was burnt out i pushed this through before you came on ralph i had pushed it through for a year okay so i think i was a little burnt so i was glad for the for the break you know oh okay yeah 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 i was i appreciated the break but now we're back and we're on fire. <laughs> the Pawn Moves First is a podcast where Ralph, my host, yes, uh, and I, we talk about chess. We talk about the show Neighbor, which teaches the basics of chess through music, movement, and song. And we talk about the chess song. Uh, in the show Neighbors, we take chess and apply it to social issues. And when last we left off, you remember, Ralph? We were on chest and bullying. Yes. Chest, not chest. Chest. <laughs> Your chest. <laughs> Double S, not S-T. Chest and bullying. And um, then, uh, so that's the podcast. So we're back. We're a monthly podcast because um, Ralph and I both have lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a monthly podcast, and we just have fun talking about chess. And, and we're on the fourth episode of the show Neighbors, where we talk about chess and bullying. I need a better background, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, how you doing, Ralph? I'm doing well. I was trying to bring up my YouTube on my, my laptop, having trouble here, but, you know, to bring up my YouTube channel. Yeah, um, I have it here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I have it here. We we kind of prepared. <laughs> 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 so, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy birthday to your mother. Thank you, thank you. It was, it was a great, it was a great affair. Everybody was dancing. She had a great time. She yeah. looked uh, re she looked regal in her in appearance. She was glowing wow. that day. Wow, I should be so you know seventy. I'm sixty. I got four years. I should be so lucky, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a blessing. It really is. It really is. Well, I, <laughs> I've been thinking about you know because we've been away for the podcast basically for two months because this mm -hmm. is not going to come out until next month. Oh, okay. So we're recording in February. I'm not going to edit it and stuff like that until next weekend. Okay. So, so I was thinking like, oh gosh, I haven't heard that smooth, velvety voice of Ralph. <laughs> and uh, oh, thank you. you, thank you. Then, then you sent me the video, and I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was that was the game. Um, um. The the man he he's from Hungary. He won Player of the Week. And I wanted to feature one of his games since he won Player of the Week. So I, I did a, um, a video, you know, um, covering that. Okay. So, so, Ralph, you were telling me about um, the tournament. Yeah. Um, we, we have uh, several tournaments going on now. Um, the Shocktober tournament, which started in October, is still going on. Um, it's in it's in the uh, the finals. The the two finalists are um, YDTD and Chevalier Chess, and we currently have um, the Happy New Year tournament. That's um, that's also in the final stages, and that's YDTD versus Checkmate in four two seven. So 
okay. the common denominator is YDTDs in both finalists in both finals and in, in both of those tournament tournaments. Oh wow! Well, yeah, fire. I was trying to find a way, and I guess when the, when I start the screen, you want to take a look at it. How long is the video? Oh, just four. Um. Yeah, this is four minutes. Now, now this yeah. this this is not part of the tournament, even though he is a finalist. Um, yes. in the Shocktober tournament, this is um Chevalier Chess, and he won um Player of the Week because he did you know he did a marvelous job, uh, in his game uh during, during the week. Um, I, I thought I might have put the the week in there. I forgot it was two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. And so okay. yeah, and so I picked I picked a game where he covered where I covered um you know one of his uh better games that he played okay 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 so uh, do we have anything from the tournament tournament i i looked at your page i didn't see um Just no i don't think i have anything yeah. from the uh the tournament because they're still you know underway they're still going on okay um so okay. there's nothing from the tournament no nothing from the tournament we're still, yeah. it's still going on from the last two months ago it's still going yeah. on yeah Okay. Yeah, it's a slow okay. process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's good to know. So we want to spotlight. Do you want to? Should I start anywhere? Or do you want to go through the the whole video? Um. No. Well. Uh. This, this is Chevalier Chess. Okay. He's uh, the num he's the number one rated um player in our club. He's from Hungary. Okay. Um. I, I've never met him. He's from online. Nice okay. guy. I've uh you know uh communicated with him uh, via texting on on chess dot com. Okay. And um, he's a strong player, a very good player. And I just uh, go over one of his uh, better games that he played during the week. Okay. So before we get into that, I, you know, we got, we've been gone such a long time. I, in the intro and stuff, I forget. Uh, Ralph's Les Castle 832 tournament and participants. And this week we're giving Chevaliers. Chevalier Chess or Chevalier, Chevalier Chess, Chess, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Chevalier um, Chess. Yeah. Wins Les Castle Play of the Week. So, I mean, let's listen to it a little bit. If you jump in and you, you tell me where to go, if not, we just listen to it. Through. We, I mean, we're going to give him his props, right? Well, you know, at the very least, you get to hear my voice. <laughs> well, that's always a pleasure. <laughs> hey, what's up, Castle? It's LF07 here with more Let's Castle action. And this week, LC number one Chevalier Chess was awarded the Player of the Week because he was able to take out the top player of the opposing chess club in the Team Match Championship League Round 3 of the 2023 playoffs. This was the first of two games, and this particular game began on November 1st, 2023, and was completed February 15th, of 2024. Chevalier Chess had the white pieces and his 1908. So it just finished up. Just finished up, yes. Okay, okay. It started in 23 and ended yeah. in 24. <laughs> uh, that's a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Opponent Vamshi 219 from India had black. The mad Hungarian begins with pawn to e4. Pawn to c5 is the subsequent move. And yes, we have a Sicilian on the board. We then get knight to c3, g. Why is it called a Sicilian? Uh, that's the you know I'm sure that maybe it was a uh, um, uh, it was probably uh named after a Sicilian chess player. I've got to do more okay. studies on that, but but okay. usually, um, the first move of one e4 and um one uh what's that c5 is is called the uh the Sicilian defense. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. If you ever do a little video for that, that can you make that up for us? The Remember? Sicilian defense? Sure. Yeah. Oh, that that's gonna get you thousands of views. Yeah. This, oh, okay, yeah. I'm, Just like the uh the the what was that? Uh the um oh the other oh go ahead. I don't want to take up much of your time. Right. Six G three bishop to g seven, bishop to g two, both players fee and kettle their bishops. Knight to c6, pawn to d3, knight f6. The player is basically developing their pieces nicely. And you can see here, Vamshi has a nice uh, pawn chain developing. Storming his pawns down. And uh, he's threatening the knight here, knight d. He is storming those pawns down. Yeah, he's pushing those pawns down, taking up a lot of space. Yes. Yeah, he has it almost. 
you know, like a, I don't, I don't know, like a. Yeah, you see that? You see that diagonal right there, Vicky? Yeah, that's what I'm. Horns? Okay, hold on. Let me move my. Uh, yeah, this God, I had a, a, a pointer. Yes, I'm seeing this. Yeah, that's very good. That's called a pawn chain. Pawn chains are great because they're hard to break. So if you have a nice pawn chain, it's it's very good. And the weakest link of the pawn chain is called the uh -huh. um the base pawn. The base pawn. It's the pawn that's at the bottom, or in this case, at the top of the screen. It's it's, it's the weakest uh pawn. So you got to make sure but that I got you. The, the thing on here. Uh, move it over. Move it over to the left. Okay. Yeah, right there. That's the base pawn. That's the weakest oh, pawn of a, of a pawn chain. Okay. So when you yeah. do the chain, that's yeah, the make sure you're defending that that base pawn because it's the weakest. It's the, it's the weakest it's part, part of the um. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's yeah, it's it's hard to break because the one the pawn all the way at the bottom. Uh huh. That, is defended by the uh, next pawn diagonal to it, which is defended by the next pawn that's diagonal to it, which is defended by the next pawn diagonal to it. So it's hard, it's hard to break because it's defended right. by pawns. You know, it's very hard to break. It's a, it's a great, um, it's 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 something great to have in chess, having a pawn chain. Okay, and that's the king, isn't it? With my pawn. The is king. My pawn chain. No, that's actually the queen. The queen has the bun. Okay, that's what I'm saying. That that pawn is protecting the queen, right? Well, that's actually the queen is protecting that pawn. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The queen has the bun, and the and king has the has the X on top of his head, supposedly. <laughs> okay. 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 Or the okay. cross. I should say the cross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I had that problem a lot when I was there. okay. Oh, is there some way you could set up and do a video for us of the chain? Um. Yeah, I can do a pawn chain. Yeah, pawn so chains got... are, would make a good video. So we got the Sicilian and the defense and the pawn chain and the pawn chain. Okay. Remind me to to do that video. Remind me, please. <laughs> Hold on, let me pull out my phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Write that down and send it to me. Like Ralph, don't forget that pawn chain video. Hold on. And the and the and the Sicilian because when I did the uh, on Pathant, that got a lot of views as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. Surprisingly, I didn't think people were going to um look at it, but they uh, apparently they liked my explanation of it. Oh, oh, of course. Pawn chain and Sicilian, right? Sicilian defense, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm just texting you real quick. Quick, pawn chain and Sicilian defense. Should I put video? Yeah. So, you, okay, video of. Cause, honey, I'm 66. By the time we finish doing this, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so I, we're learning a lot. This is good. I mean, especially yeah. anyway. One, Chevalier just moves his knight out of the way. Vamshi mobilizes his a pawn, now taking up more space. Chevalier Chess wants to get a kingside attack going with pawn to f4. And you really don't get any fireworks until move 15 when uh, Vamshi hits the queen with pawn to c3 right here. And Chevalier Chess plays the best Wait move. a minute. Hold he, on. He takes Hold uh -huh. on. He was starting to do a check. Uh, oh, so how this, like the chain moves. Can you see my uh, pointer? Yes. So the chain moves. I thought it was going to go like this way. Vampy was moving his pawn chain up to just like a snake. Yes, and just moving yes, pieces yes. Out. You see how he, he attacked the knight, and so Chevalier just had to move his knight backwards. That's mm -hmm. what a good pawn chain will do, which is move pieces out of the way because you don't want your your piece, which is a greater value, to be taken by a pawn, which is of lesser value. If you're going to swap pieces, you want to swap equal value for equal value. Okay, okay. You get an exchange of minor pieces and queen c7. This is uh, this move was played by Vamshi, but Stockfish would have preferred it to recapture. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, the computer didn't like that move, so I had to, you know, really uh, oh. emphasize that with a, with, a, with a meme or a gif or whatever they talk oh. about it. Like, what was he doing there? <laughs> yeah, on, on I thought that was comical, yeah, like so. And, you know, just keep the material even. However, 
go back. However, three moves later, Vamsi played uh, Rook to B4, which is a blunder because it leaves you vulnerable to, uh, well, Knight to D5. And that's forking the Rook and Queen on C7. Fortunately, now, Knight to D5, you can stop it there. Yeah. See, if he plays Knight to D5, that's, right. a tactic called, that's a tactic called a fork. And a fork is when a piece is attacking two um, pieces of the opponent's, um, two opponent pieces, simultaneously at the same time. So it's like you're forking them. You know, when they say, uh, stop at the fork in the road? Yeah, and it goes yeah, off yeah. like that? Well, you're attacking two pieces at the same time. I was working for this lady in British. <laughs> she was a Parisian woman. And mm -hmm. she was giving me directions. And she said, drive until you have to make a decision and mm -hmm. decide right. And then she'll say, drive <laughs> until you have to make a decision and decide left. She wouldn't say to you, come to a fork of the road. Yeah. She would just say, drive it to you have to make a decision. Make a decision. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> so this is what the fork <laughs> is, you know? So mm -hmm. let's see what the decision is. The Indian, Shivaya just missed that move and he played 92 instead. He didn't do that move. But that would have been the better oh, move. Doubles up on the he he missed that move. Yeah. Shivaya just tickles the rook. So Vam, she plays rook. Wait a minute. What's tickling the rook? <laughs> tickling is just when you attack a piece. It's like tickle, tickle, tickle. You better move. You're making a move just to move them out of the way. Okay, okay, okay. So it's like tickling. Tickle, tickle, tickle. tickle. Again. Okay. The rook moves to a safer square. You then get knight to f4 on the a4. Knight d5 hitting the queen. The queen moves to d8. And now Chevalier just places his queen on c4, pressuring the pawn and knight simultaneously. Knight to a7 is saved, but queen takes a4 when Chevalier chess a free pawn and hits the knight again. And now Chevalier chess has a two point material lead. Vam, she moves the knight to safety for a second time. You continue with queen to f4. Knight f6 looking to trade knights, but the trade is rejected by Chevalier Chess, who goes after the rook. Vamsi plays rook b7 looking to win a knight, but the Hungarian turns the tables on him and plays knight a6. This is going to win Chevalier Chess material. If you try to save the rook on b8, like so, you simply push the pawn, and now you're attacking the knight on f6, and your rook is threatened by the sniper on g2. The sniper is the bishop, by the, the way. Queen on d5. The sniper is what? The sniper is the bishop. That's that's a nickname for a bishop. It's they call it the sniper because it's a long range attacker. See, uh, it's all the way hidden, all the way on um that g2 square, all the way down in the right hand corner. Yes. And it's aiming right. It's aiming right at the rook. Those two rooks actually, mm. in the upper left hand corner. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a long range attacker, so they okay. call it a sniper. Okay. Oh, yeah, from there to over here, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Exactly. Very good, Vicky. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go back. If you threaten the queen with pawn to d5, you can move your queen to e2, and it, your rook is still gone, though. Not to mention, you can recapture the pawn that you lost with the sniper. Damn, she realized he was going to suffer heavy material. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. I lock the dogs away every weekend that I'm supposed to do a record, though we haven't recorded in like two months. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter has something to do. So do you hear the dogs barking in the background? No, I don't hear the dogs at all. Okay, then we're going on. <laughs> and uh, he basically resigned three moves later. As you can see uh, on the board right now, you wave the proverbial white flag. So just a well played uh -huh. game by Elsie. Did you see the Muppet? Just, and at this point, did you really? <laughs> I did. I said, <laughs> surrender. <laughs> anything was. Unfortunately, that will not help Let's Castle win the playoff round as LC trails 16 and a half to six and a half points with three games remaining. So you can do the math. They've already mathematically lost this round. Nevertheless, a very nice win from the Mad Hungarian and a well-deserved Player of the Week honor for him. So that's going to do it for this video. I'm Ella Defo 7 saying stay tuned. <laughs>
that's, 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 my, that's, that's my Don King look. Don King. Yeah. What's up, Castle? It's another 07 here with more Let's Castle at. <laughs> is he still alive? <laughs> is, I think he is. I think he's in his 90s, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Only in America. Yeah. Only we, in America. I <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was nice so the competition Thank you. is still going on competition is still going on okay so Ralph I I this is the, the we're still in Danbury neighbors, mm -hmm. neighbors and um, we've talked to the counselors about bullying and chess mm -hmm. and that video that you did was excellent about the positions. And you know what? It would be a good idea. You see how they line, how how Chevalier Chess? Mm -hmm. No, no. It wasn't Chevalier Chess. It was Indian guy, right? Yeah. How yeah, it was Indian guy, Vancey. Yeah, Vancey. How he lined up, you said the, the um, pawn chain? Pawn chain, yes. Yeah. That's almost how it is, I guess, if you're being bullied, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you put together, see, pawns are like the weakest, are, are seen as the, the less valued piece in, in chess, the most, the least valued piece in chess. But pawns could be a, a formidable opponent, opponent, especially when you link them together. A pawn chain is very yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. That would yes. be great. I mean, if you could just add a little bit of that in when you do the pawn chain. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Oh, this is my. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I'll show it again at the end. This is my Stay Fly shirt that Tyree, who sings Neighbors, he's into mm -hmm. manufacturing and designing. Really? He so he does yes. shirts? Yes. You might have to give me his number. If he gives me if he does, you know, gives a good price, I am looking uh to do shirts for uh my Let's Castle. I want Let's Castle shirts. Oh yeah, he does all that stuff. Okay, 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 okay. I'm I I I know him through Facebook. I contact him through Facebook. So I've yeah. also been off Facebook for a month, Ralph. I took the month of February off. I just wanted to direct my energy someplace else. Yeah, me. I absolutely know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah, I don't go back on to uh March first. So Okay. <laughs> so as soon as get I away from that off, social media, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted my energy. I just wanted such good, positive, uplifting energy. I wanted to get into wants and better and best and greater and more and stuff. And I just didn't want so that my energy going towards social media like that. I wanted to go towards me. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear so, you. So as soon as I get back on, yeah, he does. Oh yeah, he can do the shirts and stuff like that for you. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, so I just said that it's called Stay Fly Gear, and I was like, I I knew him since he was in middle school because I'm friends mm -hmm. with his mother, and I said, you know, I finally have a friend who's in manufacturing, or know someone who's in manufacturing who, whose hustle is different into the you know doing clothes, designing clothes, different things like that, promoting designers, and he gets his models and stuff like that. So yeah, that's Tyree. It, this is the singer of the song we're about to hear. Okay. Neighbors, 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 neighbors. Teach one, teach one. Mother and father and daughter and son. We oh. gonna learn and plus have fun. That was me, <laughs> Miriam, Jonathan, Darlene, and my daughter, and we're dancing to neighbors. <laughs> the time has come. Reach out to your yep. neighbor. We're all standing in the front of the camera. Joan is at it. All good. We all get along. Miriam. Clap your hands, sing along to the song. Young people, you ain't gotta do wrong. We can all do right. Come on. Just to make it take the head, shut up on the line, shake it up in the sun. Get up. And you know what? I don't know why it does that. Even in the other ones that I have, it, it bleeds <laughs> over. But if you see the earlier ones, it didn't bleed over. So, I, But it just started bleeding over, and I was like, you yeah. know what? Well, I like the spin that you did when you was doing the rapping. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Will. <laughs> Here we are, episode four. The Knights, they are the soldiers who protect the king. They move two squares straight forward and one square either left or right. In real life, the Knights are represented by the people who make and enforce the laws which protect you, either in government or law enforcement. This is their story. And first, we start with a teacher of young kids. Again, as a New York City public school teacher, I think it's so important to Joe W. Fulton. talk to the children. That, you know, I feel that to be accepted. All, they're all, everybody's different, and we all have to accept everybody's differences. And I think uh, teachers are a large part to do with that. Um, if if I accept all the differences, they will also. Um, uh, I would not tolerate anybody being cruel to any other members of the classroom. And um, so you know, it was it was fun. We, we, we discussed bullying, we discussed people being different, we discussed being mean to each other, and uh, and then we talked about how we can help other students. When uh, you were a teacher, um, did you feel like there was enough things in place with the administration to handle bullying? Or was it at a time when it was kind of overlooked and ignored because they thought the kids may be able to take care of themselves, you know, something like that? Yeah, it's a good question. I find, I found that the administration really didn't want to deal with what the parents complained. It was up to me to really deal with what was going on in the classroom, to set the tone of the classroom, that everybody was accepted, that all the differences were accepted. And again, I think it started with me. Um, I always said to the students, you don't have to like each other, but you have to accept each other. If you're classmates, you have to stick up for each other. And again, it started with me in the classroom. They always were there for each other. And uh, reading what you read today about the changes that uh, the different approaches now that they're taking to handle bullying, do you feel like it's a step in the right direction or do you still feel like, uh, you know, it starts with the individual teacher? I think it also, it's basically, it starts at home with the parents. And I, as a teacher, work very closely with the uh, parents to show that we had to accept everybody and their differences. Um, I had, again, working in the Upper West Side, we had different kinds of families. We had um, students with two mothers, students with two fathers, students with only one parent. And again, they were all accepted. Everybody's differences were accepted. And the state of Connecticut legislation was amended to include in July 2011. Okay, here we go. The state of Connecticut enacted new anti bullying legislation, which requires that schools become much more proactive in regards to how they respond to bullying incidents. That's not the definition of bullying been expanded okay. to bullying, both during school hours and off school hours. It requires schools to incorporate school climate specialists and coordinators and respond to bullying investigations in a prompt, effective manner. We were supposed to meet with uh, Senator Michael McLaughlin this afternoon, uh, but unfortunately, um, we'll, we'll consider the scheduling conflicts. Um, he wasn't able to be here. Uh, but him and his staff was kind enough to send us some information about what, as a legislative body, the, the Congress of Connecticut and Whatever they are, state, legislature. state legislatures of Connecticut. Um, what they what they are doing uh, about bullying, and he sent us some information on Public Act eleven two thirty two, uh, which basically is the this act is me and that, Matthew, you uh, know, handles school bullying, okay. and cyber bullying to it. But they uh, passed that or uh, amended that act back in uh, two thousand and eleven. Um, and it's essentially it's interesting. You mentioned the schools and uh, this Public Act eleven two thirty two. It basically makes the school principal responsible for investigating or designating someone to investigate and address bullying, whether it occurs in or out of school. Um, so they're basically saying that um, it's the principal's responsibility to, to, to address and then resolve any bullying that happens within his school or her school. And uh, they're also required to establish deadlines for investigating, reporting, notifying parents about bullying incidents. Um, they're prohibited from retaliation against those who report bullying, so they're not, you know, it makes it a safe environment mm -hmm. uh, for the kids to report bullying. And it also uh, requires school officials to notify police when they believe bullying kind of constitutes a crime. So there's more uh, obligation for the uh, administration to uh, actually call police department uh, and things like that. So it's not all covered up and hushed up within the school uh, because they're also supposed to uh, assess 
what's happening, make reports to the state and uh, kind of make it more transparent. Whereas before, when we were talking about Joni, you know, kind of they, they didn't, they kind of closed their eyes to it. Um, so now they're kind of making it more visible and actually putting responsibility uh, right at the top of the school principal. So I thought that was interesting. Now, if the state uh, said in the heck of what you had questions for him in reference to that reporting? Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask him um, basically what uh, those reports showed. Um, you know, is bullying rampant throughout the schools? Um, is it being addressed better? Uh, and is their new act or the updated act that they passed last year? So you see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. he, 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 you know, we were in Danbury and we tried to get a representative to come and speak to us about the state laws and he, you know, scheduling conflict. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I thank you so much for that, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And you still having your Saturday um, chess? Um, your chess meetup. Uh, um, we meet up uh, for chess. Uh, usually I go out to Austin, but we, we change it around. I meet up with my um, my chess group. Um, in the Bronx or Yonkers or Austin, because that's where a lot of them um, live. Um, also on Sat on Fridays and Saturdays, I have um, uh, a speed chess uh, tournament that I do every night at eight thirty p.m. So that's a lot of fun as well. Speed online, chess, online, yeah, yeah. That's the one I'm with, that you mentioned before. It's been two months, but that's the last. Oh, night. okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, you did mention that and how to yes. reach you and 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 yes. uh, sign up for on, it. So, so yeah, it's still uh, on. Yeah, it's still going. We do it every week. Um, on Fridays is fifteen minute um games, and on Saturday nights is five minute speed, real fast speed uh speed chess tournament. And, and how do they get involved? How, what what do they have to do to contact you? Uh, you can go on, go on chess dot com and hit me up at um lsf o seven. Send me a, a message, um, or you can email me at eledef one four at yahoo dot com lsf fourteen. At yahoo.com and say, hey, I'm I'm interested in joining your um Let's Castle Club. And okay. I'll, I'll shoot your message. Oh I guess I was about to say, could they leave a message on one of the videos on um Castle? Oh, and Let's Castle 832. Let's, yeah. Let's Castle 832. Okay, good, yeah. good. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning. Thanks you, Ralph, for co-hosting with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks and for having me. You're welcome. And thank you guys for tuning in to the Pond Moves First podcast. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye, Ralph. Bye, Vicky. <laughs>